Bonjour, Professor Candido here with a solution to the flooring calculator challenge I posted in Blackboard. So what we do here is we ask for the input of the room length and room width. Remember, input returns a string. I ask for the length, you type in a value, and it's transferred back as a string. We make it a float, and we put it in here. I decided to be a little different today. Instead of putting an F in front of length and an F in front of width, even though it's a float, I put an N for number. You could put an F in there, um, but I don't recommend an I because that insinuates that it's an integer. So I take the length that was entered, convert it to a float, multiplied it by the width, and I get the area. Anyone who's ever laid floors, as I did when I was going to college, and I still do in my properties, is I take the area and I multiply it by 0.1 to get a scrap. You should always have about 10% extra of the flooring. I add the area that was computed up here to the scrap to get a total. And then I write out to the screen the area of the room is, and I'm using a different variation of, of the print. I'm using the plus to string together the output. I'm using the format. I'm taking area, and I want 10 positions point, I want a decimal point, in two decimal positions, rounded up or down. And I do the same thing for scrap, total, and yards. So let's run it. Let's see what we get. I'm going to put in um, a dimension of one of the rooms in my house. So I just want to make sure everyone understands what's happening here. I'm going to move the window down. Okay, so right here, see where it says room length? That's this code. I type 1, 4. 1, 4 gets put over to the float. 1, 4 is converted to a float. And end length has a value 1, 4.0. Here I'm about to hit enter with 20. 20 gets returned as a string to the float function. The input returns the 20. The float function makes 20 become 20.0 and puts into here. And let's let the program run. Oh, I interrupted it. And I hit enter. And there's my output. Now's a good time to talk about name constants. Remember, a name constant is a number that, um, or it doesn't have to be a number, it could be a variable, that should be an uppercase. And that tells the programmer, or whoever looks at the code, that we envision to never change what the scrap factor is. Variables, length and width, and width and end width uh, and length and end width and end area will change depending on the input, but the scrap will always stay the same. And we could do something like this for yards. And square yards is uh, a yard, in case you don't know, is equivalent to three feet. So square yards would be nine. So notice now that I have these name constants, I can come down here and change that. It just makes your code easier. This down here is called hard coding. That means you put the code in here, 9. But when you make it um, name constants, it's better code because any future modifications just have to come up here and just say, hey, we're going to make the scrap fi factor 15%. And you do it there, and you can be rest assured you don't have to dig through the code looking for it. All right, everything looks good. Hopefully, I didn't cause any errors. Let's run it. Say OK. Let's do it again. and I still get the same answers. Till I see you again in one of my videos, have a great one.